I shouldn't talk about umpires. I don't know why I do. I've, I've done enough radio to understand him. Don't bring it up. Well, Look you're not mo- you're not emotionally connected. Not some connected. goals, Gaz. Five of the first seven, mm. and then in capitals, mate. Essendon should have been three goals up at half time and put us fair enough, John. Uh, I'm not. Do not speak to me like that. Uh, uh, just disgrace too before seven o'clock. Kane whispering, Gaz. Every side reviewed except the Brisbane Lions. Pathetic. Mm. Okay, sorry about that. We'll get. We'll give um, uh, the Brisbane Lions a bit more love after we talk to this man, the field marshal. Uh, yes, we will. But uh, is Luke Parker to the is the Suns just what they need? Crazy the Josh Kelly contract versus the Park a warning seven hundred k for four years. But uh, that is. We'll talk about that and debate that maybe later in the week. I can't about answer that. that now. He, yes, he is, but he, no, it can't happen. He's wanted by the Swans, though, isn't he? Well, of course he is, yeah. yeah. You At don't what want price to did you talk about last week? Was well, I think it... your management is somewhere around 700 It's gone up over the weekend. Has it? Yeah, what he did over the weekend. Right, okay, yeah, yeah. Super player, 28 years of age, still plenty of footy left, but the Suns can't. They don't have room in the cap, Tim. So he might be all right in year one next year, but the following year, he won't it's going to go bust the open. He King, won't want to go Rankin, the They can't let him go. Surely they can't let him go, and he doesn't want to go there. So anyway, the squeeze is on there, but yeah, hard to see him elsewhere. Good to see you there, Gary. I hope you haven't woken Hello. up the fifth floor of the Holiday Inn over I know. there. I know, Fieldy. I've been going since three o'clock, so I've had a couple of bangs on the on the sidewall. Hey, um, Toby, yeah. Toby, Toby, he's going to dominate today. He is indeed. He'll front the AFL Tribunal tomorrow. Now, the timing of this case we'll find out in the next couple of hours, but Gary, generally five o'clock has been the regular time slot for these things. So the Giants are down at Barn Bugle for the week. But if Toby's playing golf, he'll have a fair bit on his mind. His contact with veteran umpire Matt Stevick, of course, as we know, graded intentional by Michael Christian, the MRO, as a new camera angle provided by Channel Wisp was pretty damning for Toby Green. So at the end of the 2018 season, the league changed the guidelines and it drew a distinction between intentional compact contact with an umpire that is, as you mentioned this morning, quote unquote, aggressive, forceful, demonstrative or disrespectful and unreasonable or unnecessary contact with an umpire. So the latter is your Lockie Neal blood rule on Matt Nichols, in which he was fined 1500 So the question they will ask at the tribunal is, was Green's contact on Stevic aggressive? Was it forceful? Was it demonstrative? Or was it disrespectful? Was it all of the above? So Matt Stevic hasn't been consulted at this stage. His evidence will be crucial come the hearing. He's umpired 45 finals, eight grand finals, been umpiring since 2004. He's seen a lot. But really, his shoulder bumped. An umpire, Toby Green. He has to be suspended. He just can't be doing that. Okay, let's go through those categories, Gary. Aggressive, what should... aggressive yes or no? Just give me, give them me the, all, the alternatives. Okay, well, the, this, this is what the contact guidelines are. Was it aggressive? Okay. So this is my take again. He, he was involved in a, an argument and an and a, and a, you know, animated debate, right? Mm. The game stops. He, lightly, when I say lines up, He's got the whole field to be able to make his way to the thing. So he decides to walk straight at the umpire. To me, that's an aggressive decision right right there, right? Then, when he gets close enough to realise that he could get out of his way, otherwise he could make some contact, he chose not to deviate. He chose to make the contact. And I don't care what Matt Stevick says. Matt Stevick can turn around and say, oh, look, I didn't feel threatened. Well, no, he didn't. We weren't going to grab you by the throat. He chose to make the contact, and to me, that's the end of the story right there. The player code is alive and well, though, isn't it? I mean, Luke well, Hodge on the ground, want. Scott Pendlebury saying the Toby tax is inbound. I mean, he will be. He has to be suspended, Gary. And it's minimum two weeks for mine. I know, Gary and Tim, you guys were saying probably three to four. It might well be. Regardless, his final series, unfortunately, is over, which is a great shame for him and the Giants. Everyone has, is entitled to their opinion. He would hope that he has a... He would hope that it was the recently retired or current players that were reviewing this, um, and thank goodness it's not, because it would be game on regardless of what you did if, if those sorts of recently retired or current players were in charge. Send us through your feedback on the text, the temper text this morning. Uh, we would love to hear from you on this topic. What about the game on Saturday, the semi final? I know you were taking a call during the last break. Uh, where We know that it's going to be at the Gabba. What time on Saturday do you think it's going to be played? We don't know. And they will have 100% capacity at this stage as well, Tim, which is great. The winner to face Port Adelaide, obviously, at the Adelaide Oval on Saturday, September 11. But what time the Gabba will be rocking is still to be determined. So the COVID protocols the dogs have to go through a play 
playing a big part here. The Dogs are at the Country Club in Launceston for the week. They will fly to Brisbane on Friday, but because they've been in Victoria, they have to stay in their hotel rooms upon arrival right up until the game at this point. So with that in mind, as Luke Beveridge put on the agenda in his post-match press conference, his team would deal with it if need be, but they don't want to be sitting around for that long if they can help it. So they want to bring the game forward. Now, I can't imagine Channel 7 are too keen for a day or twilight game. They haven't paid a discount this year like they did last year. They would prefer a night game for the ratings, I'm sure. Whether they get to a 4.30, 5.30 bounce, the dogs are hopeful of that. They will learn that today, but they have to go on Friday at the moment. That's what they're being told to do. That's what the Queensland government are mandating at the moment, to give them time for, for testing and the protocols they have to go through. So they want it to be a twilight team at the moment. The AFL and Channel 7, obviously in Fox, they're all partners. Who gets the ultimate say here, do you think, Sam? Well, I would have thought Channel 7 would have to bend for it to be brought forward. That's just me looking at it from the outside. We haven't seen a day semi-final for 20 years, and there's a reason for that. Mm. And with everything going on at the moment, I'd be really surprised. But the dogs are hopeful at the moment for the for the reasons that Luke Beveridge mentioned. The AFL have been, all credit to them, doing all they can to help yep. teams that it, that it involves in any given week. And the AFL just turns around and says, OK, there's been a lot of disruptions to everybody's schedule because of COVID. This, unfortunately, and as unfair as you might think it is, just happens to be another one. And you look, they're just going to have to cop it. And I'm sure they will. They'll say, look, we'll deal with it. As Luke Beveridge said, if it is a day and a half sitting around the hotel room, then so be it. Because as we've seen, everyone has their turn, don't they? They do. And they have. Um, it's hard. It, it has to be incredibly difficult, though, to you know travel up there on a Friday night, not be able yep. to leave your room until you play again you know, late on the Saturday. And, you know, we wonder, can they go on the day of the game? But it's, a, what is it, a better part of a three-hour flight. Um, there's a lot to go through, as I say, when they land in terms of the protocols. So the AFL want them there a day earlier. Speaking of things that teams are having to do, what about Travis Varco running water for the Dogs yesterday? He's their development coach. It's never happened before, but given the travelling party is streamlined, he's a dual premiership player running water out at, a, at an elimination final for the Western Bulldogs. How did he go? I thought he ran did it he pretty well. get out and back quick enough, did I he? I thought he ran it pretty well, yeah. He's a good runner, is we it, know that. Is he part of their coaching setup? He's their development yep. coach, one of their develop, right. in the development team there, yeah. So would that have had to have been ticked off? I mean, the obvious, when when I saw that up on my screen here, I thought, oh, is, are they in trouble for this? Has he been out no, no, no. messing? No, 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 he was approved to do the job just because they couldn't take, obviously, everyone right. down there, the Western Bulldogs, and he's part of their travelling party, so they're multitasking. Hey, one of the players of the weekend had to be Aaliyah Aaliyah. I just wanted to talk about the credit, an enormous credit that must go to the Port Adelaide list management team led by Jason Cripps. Now, few clubs had Aaliyah on their pin board because he was due to become a free agent at the end of this year. But the power pounced early, like they did with Orazio Fantasia, preying on the fact that Aaliyah was all over the magnet board at Sydney. He was back, he was ruck, he was forward mm. at times. Now, list managers tell you the big part of the move was the way Port defend. They sold that to Aaliyah and how it would suit him. Sydney, though, were really compromised by the fact they desperately needed a ruckman. And in fact, the Swans used the pick they got for Aaliyah and sent it straight to West Coast to get Tom Hickey. So the power lent on that as well. They've settled him in the one spot. A nice contract helps too, of course, a four-year deal yeah. to get him across. But it all goes in the melting pot as we wonder here now on a Monday morning after the season that he's had, the uh, final that he's had, how could this possibly have happened? <laughs> he completely disrupted Geelong at the weekend. Completely yeah, disrupted. He was superb. So d doesn't it make it interesting? I know I've heard you say, Fieldy, that you think it'll be a you know, rather quiet or quieter trade period and that you know, no one's got money and all that sort of stuff. Mm. But doesn't that make it even more fascinating that if you can identify a little gem like this where you don't have to pay, you know, Ho overs and overs and you can get a job done that there's still scope to better your side through smart trading and or recruiting. No, absolutely. And there's always exceptions to the rule, Gary. The list is what the list manager is saying at the moment, but they do say, look, if there's a way to, if you have a big fish available, mm. you will move heaven and earth to shuffle things around. It's just going to take a lot of planning, a lot of crafty list management and balancing of the books to, to make it happen at the moment because, as we know, of the forces outside of their control with the, the pay deferrals and the like with the soft cap and the salary cap shrinking. Hey, uh, what about the Carlton situation? Uh, are we hearing that... Uh the job is Ross Lyons? We are. Well, we're hearing anyway that Nathan Buckley, as reported by Jay Clark over the weekend, has pulled out of the running. Um, we know that if Alistair he ever Clarkson, was in the running. If like, he ever was. Well, the interesting part to that was that uh, he and Luke Sayers are actually quite mate. They and have been spoken. friends over the years. And, and he, he put stayed, that on the record. He yep. stayed at his place in uh, Italy or wherever it might have been on a, on a family holiday at one stage. But he has definitely ruled out the possibility that he'll be coaching next season. And Alistair Clarkson said no. 
And Michael Voss, perhaps a little, still a little bit scarred by the last experience he had with potentially putting his hat in the ring at Carlton as well. And then the overwhelming feeling that this just might be a big sham and, and that Ross Lyon perhaps has his hands on the coaching role already. So we'll see what happens. Great work, Sammy. Uh, here for, we'll listen to you throughout the week. Uh, this is where you come into your own this time of year. Here for Ryko Fielders, ask your mechanic uh, for the professional's choice.